morning, everybody, and welcome to this great Dublin City Marathon. <laughs> this is a sight to be seen. It's a magnificent sight here in Stevens Green, where we've got over 2,000 boys and girls. I give them the title of boys and girls this morning, ready to go, ready to run the 26 miles. I wish you all every success. The first ever RT Radio 2 Dublin City Marathon has been got off the ground. And I hope this will be the first of many. Yes, marathon fever has hit Dublin. Well, it's a great, a big day. Ooh, baby, well, it's a great, a big day. Well, it's a great big day, Mama. You know it's a great a big day. The weather forecast: cloudy and mild, with occasional rain or drizzle. Moderate southwesterly wind. Yes, marathon fever has hit Dublin. <laughs> Monday, October the 27th, 1980, the day when marathon fever struck the streets of Dublin with more than 2,000 runners setting off from St. Stephen's Green in the first RT Radio 2 Dublin City Marathon. The route took the competitors up through the ancient liberties to the Phoenix Park, on to Cabra, Finglas, Whitehall, Dunny Carney, Rohini, Clontarf, Fairview, then back across the Liffey, out to Balls Bridge, to Donnybrook, and finally back once more to the finishing line at St. Stephen's Green, a gruelling distance of 26 miles, 385 yards. For a minority such as Olympic runners Dick Cooper and Neil Cusack, it was a battle to finish first. But for the vast majority, it was simply a battle to finish. And those in St. Stephen's Green could scarcely believe their eyes. Hey, you! Don't watch that! Watch this! Well, listen, Buster, you better start to move your feet. One step beyond! <laughs>
Almost 15 miles, the leading group had stayed together, but once Dick Cooper, who had run in Moscow just a few months previously, reached his home village of Rohini, he went clear. At the Olympics, Hooper had disappointed, but now he was out to make amends, and by Fairview he had built up a commanding lead. The route was familiar to Hooper as well. Each day going to work, he covers the same roads from his north side home to the city centre, and already you could sense that this was going to be his marathon. In second place, 28-year-old James McGlynn, fourth in the Aberdeen Marathon in September. But this day, like so many more, far behind him, he was struggling. By now, the leaders were nearing the wall, that 20 miles barrier, known to marathon runners as the halfway stage. Jim McGlynn was in big trouble. Neil Cusack was third, but at this stage, he knew that unless something dramatic happened, this was not going to be his day. Into Bowles Bridge, James McGlynn is nowhere to be seen, and it's Cusack who has moved into second place. But now, in the last few miles, he is four minutes behind Dick Cooper. For the first time, John O'Flynn from Leevale comes into contention. He is ten minutes behind Hooper, but running the race of his life. I'm okay. I still have another few miles to go. If you feel finished. No, I won't finish. No. I'll get to Amin Street though. Mop the rest. Just, uh, yeah, I'm not gonna happen the best of them. Haven't got a crutch, sir, have you? <laughs> Good luck. I'm glad I'm on TV, I you know. You don't want a song when I'm here. The great thing is to compete. I will definitely finish. You think you're, you're finished? Okay. I went through the first med center's gonna finish, so I'll be back on the Well, best of luck. I hope. All the best. Thank you. You can make it if you try. You can make it if you try You can make it if you try oh, yeah. You can make it if you try oh. <laughs> And there's the people 
clock, clock won't tell time. She walked through the college, but where she loses mind, but she tough. Well, the old folks boogie and the children do too Ain't to no bother to do it like me and you Well, it's a great, a big day Ooh, baby, well, it's a great, a big day Well, it's a great, big day, mama You know it's a great, a big day You know And I think I would like to thank the magnificent response that the people of Dublin have given this great occasion. Today has been truly a real festive occasion, an occasion in which the Dubliners responded well. Renew thanks to RTE and again my request bordering on a threat if they don't repeat it for us next year. <laughs> I finished just about. Great. If I walk in the pathway of duty, if I work to the close of the day long.
sweet as he can be Hands off of him He belongs to me Hands off of him He don't belong to you He's mine, all mine No matter what you do Treats me kind and gentle Makes me feel so good Loves me every morning Well, that account of the RT2, Radio 2's Dublin City Marathon there, compiled and edited by Malachy Lawless, and the reporter was John Saunders. And incidentally, about 1,500 people who started of the 2,000, 1,500 finished. So it was a tremendous uh, account of the fitness of all those who took part. Very well organized event, and uh, I'm sure many people will be hoping to have a go in the 1981 Dublin City Marathon. And it's interesting, too, that London City have decided, after the success of the Dublin City one, that they're going to have one in 1981 as well. Right then, we're going to catch up on another racing result from Navin, so we go back to Brendan Delaney. It's the three o'clock, first number three, Castle Haven, five to one, four, Fortune Seeker, three to one, and one, Harwell Abbey, 20 to one.